Good morning and welcome to Live for Five with Pastor Ben. Grab your coffee. So I'm, I've mentioned my orange and blue tape that just ends up kind of on everything. The one thing that it wasn't on, or isn't on, well, is now, but it wasn't yesterday, is our shovel at the front porch that I used to shovel the the walkway. It walked off yesterday. <laughs> Someone took our shovel. And uh, come to find out, it was just uh, a misunderstanding that the crew that shovels our sidewalks in our HOA uh, their shovel of choice is the shovel that I have, and so the shovel uh, disappeared. We contacted the uh, contractor, and it r- returned, but I then put my orange and blue tape on it. It could still walk off, but nonetheless, it's an identifying mark. Uh, good morning, Todd, Terry, Diana, June. I'm glad to have you with us this morning. Uh, let's make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. Uh, pull out that Version Bible app, and our verse of the day is Psalm 18, verse 2. The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer, my God, my rock, in whom I take refuge, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Now, if, if you read through the Psalms, you will notice that they uh, are drastically different in many ways and similar in many ways, okay? Okay. So some of the psalms are are fear and lament and sadness. Um, for example, David's psalm when Saul is coming at him is uh, very sad. Lord, where are you in the midst of all this attacks from my enemies? But this psalm appears to be one by David, servant of the Lord who addresses uh, the songs of the Lord. Uh, when the Lord is delivering him from the hands of his enemies. And this one, in particular, appears to be uh, in the timeline when he was delivered from the hand of Saul, who is attacking him, trying to kill him. So the, the speaker, David, he, he, can't, he can't hide his love for Yahweh. Yahweh is his strength. And so his accolades are exp- as expansive as his joy. He's he's so happy. He's happy. And just when you think he's finally finished, he adds a few more. He's my shield. He's the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. So maybe the reason that he can't stop is because of what C.S. Lewis also says, it is praise that completes his joy. Joy can be had without being seen or heard. But in this sense, it is culminating or completed with praise. Now, if you'd, if you'd like to see a little bit more, you'd like to have some more devotional readings, I'd, I'd encourage you to look at C.S. Lewis's Reflections on the Psalms. Um, he reflects on this psalm on pages 90 through 98. And that's where I got that idea that maybe it's that David doesn't want to stop because his praise completes the joy that's inside of him. And it's expressed in the joy that's inside of him. Um, So he says, uh, Yahweh, um, because we get God later. So God, I haven't looked at the Hebrew here, but God, I'm guessing, is Elohim. And the Lord here uh, could, could be Yahweh. I, it could be Adonai. I hadn't checked that out. But the Lord is my rock. He's my fortress and my deliverer. So these are all uh, war language from the ancient Near Eastern world. You you would often build a fortress on top of a mountain because it's easy to protect. So you build it on top of a rock. 
the biggest rock in the area. That's where your fortress is. And it's easy to receive deliverance from that position, from that place. Um, in whom I take refuge. You take refuge in this fortress on the pinnacle of a mountain. Not that dissimilar from the mountain where church, our church is. And then he goes on to talk about a shield. So we're using war language again. And then we have the the horn of my salvation. Now, in English, we have two uses of the word horn. We have a a, a bugle or a trumpet that could be considered as the horn here, a horn of triumph. But two things uh, would indicate that that is not the use here. One is the horn of a trumpet could also be a horn of the enemy saying charge and attack. Um, But the image here is an image of power. It's an animal's horn. In Israelite thought, a horned animal with its head held high, it symbolized strength and triumph. And the horn was the weapon that was its defense and its offense. It was both. And so you have... You have David saying, in the end, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold, kind of knitting these things all together. Um, When we are thankful and joyful that the Lord has delivered us from something, what does your joy culminate in? Does it culminate in praise of the God who delivered you from it? I'd encourage you to consider how the posture of your heart flows from joy into praise. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, you are also our rock and our salvation. We take refuge in you when times are difficult. And you have overcome many enemies for us. Some still remain, but the greatest one's been defeated, sin. Lord, we're thankful for what you have done. We pray that you would help us to express our joy in praise of your name. We pray this in your Son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have a wonderful day in the Lord, and I will see you tomorrow. One more time in God's word. Have a blessed day in Christ.